The Long Road to Zack Snyder's Justice League. As the first decade of the 21st century neared its end, Warner Brothers had a problem on their hands. Marvel was crushing their DC Comics-based films when it came to both critical and box office success. As the parent company of DC, Warner Brothers had the blockbuster Dark Knight franchise from Christopher Nolan, but little to boast about apart from Batman. As the likes of Superman Returns, Jonah Hex, and Green Lantern all underperformed or outright bombed. Meanwhile, Marvel Studios, soon to be owned by Disney, launched with beloved hit Iron Man in 2008, and then after a minor stumble with The Incredible Hulk, followed up with hit after hit with Iron Man 2, Thor, Captain America the First Avenger, and The Avengers seeing their box office begin to explode in the process. Eventually, Warners looked to Zack Snyder, who had previously directed the comic book adaptations 300 and Watchmen for the studio to bring DC's number one super team to life. Of course, there were a number of hurdles before getting to that point, and then a highly unusual road leading up to the release of the four-hour version of that movie on HBO Max. Let's take a look back at the road to Zack Snyder's Justice League. A League of Their Own A decade before the Justice League film debuted in theaters in 2017, as well as before the DC Extended Universe was even a glimmer in Warner Brothers' eyes, George Miller had been hired to put together a film called Justice League Mortal. This was in the midst of Christopher Nolan's run of Batman films, but Mortal was intended to kick off a new universe and would be unrelated to Nolan's films. However, thanks to a writer's strike and a number of other roadblocks, the movie fell apart shortly before production. Miller then decided to focus on Mad Max Fury Road, which debuted in 2015 and became one of the most beloved action films in years. After Nolan wrapped up his Batman trilogy with 2012's The Dark Knight Rises, Warners was prepared to finally kick off their own larger DC movie universe and once more wanted to make the Justice League a central part of that. Justice in the Offering Dawn of Justice, which had a reported budget of $250 million, debuted to solid numbers but had one of the steepest declines in box office history after its opening and a notably low critical response. It's at 28% on Rotten Tomatoes as of this writing. Though the movie also engendered a fervent fan community that soon became very vocal on social media. However, the film's lopsided performance led to a restructuring at DC Films. Initially, the plan was to have the film be Justice League Part 1 in 2017, and when the entire lineup for what was referred to as the DCEU was announced in September 2014, including films that would focus on Wonder Woman, Aquaman, The Flash, Cyborg, Shazam, and Green Lantern, it included Justice League Part 2, also directed by Zack Snyder, on the schedule for 2019. A Troubled Production Snyder gathered the cast and began filming in April of 2016, right in the wake of Batman v Superman's ill-received release. That summer, in the midst of production, Snyder indicated Justice League would have a different feel and likely be more fun than Batman v Superman, though he also acknowledged that there was no longer a Part 2 firmly set to begin right after. Then, during the post-production process in the spring of 2017, Snyder left the project after his daughter's tragic death. Warner Brothers hired Joss Whedon, who ushered the Avengers to the big screen in 2012 to tremendous success and had already been tapped to make a Batgirl film by Warner Brothers and DC to complete the project, after first bringing him in to write new scenes with Snyder's involvement. By July, with the November release date looming, word began to get out that the issues were more extensive than that and that Warner Brothers was reportedly worried about the film's length as well as its tone. The studio funded many new scenes written and directed by Whedon to the tune of roughly $25 million, in the process substantially altering the film and its original tone. On top of all that, the studio also demanded that the film not surpass a two-hour runtime despite its many characters and plot lines. Later, in 2020, Ray Fisher would accuse Whedon of creating a toxic and abusive work environment during these reshoots leading to an investigation by Warners that resulted in what the studio referred to as remedial action. 
the big release. In the midst of these trials and tribulations behind the scenes, Justice League debuted in theaters on November 17, 2017. On its opening weekend, the roughly $300 million budgeted picture pulled in a less-than-projected $94 million domestically, eventually earning a total of $657 million worldwide, making it the 10th highest grossing film of the year. Though Justice League clearly made money, it didn't make enough as far as Warners were concerned, and they began restructuring DC films yet again. In the meantime, Justice League Part II had died away completely, with Warner Brothers and DC strategy swerving more into standalone films than team-ups, even while the likes of Aquaman and Wonder Woman 1984 continued to feature actors Snyder had cast. However, Affleck left the solo Batman film he was set to star in and at one point direct. Instead, that project was reconceived by new director Matt Reeves to introduce a new, younger Batman played by Robert Pattinson while Whedon left the potential Batgirl film. A hashtag for change While still continuing with DCEU films, including Shazam and Birds of Prey, Warner Brothers also produced Todd Phillips' hit Joker film, announcing very clearly to the world they were no longer focused on only one particular film universe for their DC characters. As Joaquin Phoenix's version of Joker had nothing to do with the version played by Jared Leto in 2016 Suicide Squad. Still, Fans of Snyder's take on the DC heroes continued to want to see what his original version of Justice League could have been. In August 2019, Jason Momoa said that he'd seen the Snyder cut of Justice League thanks to Snyder showing it to him and loved it, or as he put it, it was sick. Though it had never gone away, long before the hashtag release the Snyder cut became inescapable with the likes of Ben Affleck, Gal Gadot, and even Snyder himself joining in. In May 2020, with HBO Max about to debut, it was announced that the new streaming service would officially release the Snyder Cut of Justice League, now titled Zack Snyder's Justice League the following year. However, the version that Snyder had on his computer was unfinished and lacked both a score and special effects. According to the director, Warner Brothers initially wanted to release his cut in that unfinished form, but he declined. With the HBO Max plan in place, Warner Media put yet another $70 million into the project to bring the total estimated budget for all incarnations of the film up to nearly $400 million. This new version of the film would require some major special effects sequences to be completed, and Snyder even brought some of the cast and crew back together in the fall of 2020 to film one big new scene which adds Jared Leto's Joker to Justice League. On March 18th, HBO Max subscribers got their chance to see a version of this movie that's been in the works in some form for over half a decade via the debut of Zack Snyder's Justice League. Where do we go from here? Even after pouring all that extra money into Zack Snyder's Justice League, the studio seems intent on leaving that arm of their cinematic universe behind. While discussing plans for the future of DC films, President Walter Hamada referred to the project as a creative cul-de-sac rather than launching or relaunching into follow-ups despite the Snyder Cut, including setup for potential sequels. Instead, Hamada and his crew are confident that audiences will be able to comprehend multiple realities on the big and small screens as they continue to venture in different directions. With that in mind, The Suicide Squad from writer-director James Gunn will be released August 6, 2021 which will feature a new interpretation of that DC team of antiheroes, albeit with some returning actors, following David Ayer's also troubled previous Suicide Squad film. Of course, you also have the various DC Arrowverse series over on the CW and a variety of new DC shows also coming to HBO Max, including Green Lantern Corps, all of which should properly test just how many DC realities viewers can or will parse. But in the midst of all that, after all this time, Zack Snyder's Justice League is available to view on HBO Max, proving you can never say never to anything when it comes to what the future holds for comic book adaptations.